All right, guys, we are back for Math 7's Chapter 2 review of the Mastery. <clears throat> One of the first things I have to talk about is that I had a grading mistake. Um, a couple of you guys, a few of you guys, um, probably I marked 35 wrong, and it is correct. Uh, in my brain, really quickly, I don't know why I switched this to addition, but then thought that the 15 was negative. So as you can see in purple, when I first went through this, I had written 5. Uh, and for a hot minute while I was grading, I marked those wrong, but, or sorry, I marked 35 wrong when it is in fact correct. Uh, likewise, if you had five, that's not correct. If I marked five correct, uh, please realize that's not right. This becomes 15 plus 20, uh, making 35. So diving in uh, at the start with number one is actually a multiple choice question. A lot of us did not read multiple choice or maybe did not mark a final multiple choice. But yeah, 15 minus 20 is negative five. So what we would be looking for is a value equal to negative five, which of course is C. As you can see here, none of the other ones equal negative five. <clears throat> what is six minus negative four? Again, this was double checking that we realized that minus a negative is the same as um, adding a positive. So remember taking away a bad guy is a good thing. Same as adding a good guy. Uh, so that would get 10 here. Same sort of work in number three. So again, I'm gonna go kind of faster here on chapter two than I did chapter one because we've had more practice with this stuff. Uh, this comes out to be negative 79, 270, 28, and negative 11. Remember, if we change all of these to addition, this is addition of a negative and the negative would obviously win when we think about the good guy, bad guy battle, 73, plus a negative 45, the good guy there would win by a difference of 28, and here the bad guy wins by 11. Uh, this was actually the same problem that we had in chapter one. I put it here again to see if we could uh, kind of recover from our trip up on chapter one. A lot of us did, but same work there. Make sure that you do the simplification inside the parentheses first, then multiplications as appropriate, and then addition and subtraction. Number five got a lot of us, so I was pretty forgiving on mistakes for number five. Um, what we want to calculate is how far is three eighths of the entire race. So three eighths of tells us to multiply and the entire race nine and a quarter. If I do four times nine plus the one, I get 37 fourths. So we multiply that across, we get 111 30 seconds or 111 over 32. Of course, like I said, we can use calculators. So if we use a calculator to get that back into a mixed number, or we just say how many 32s are in 111, that'd be 32, 64, 96, and that's as far as we can go with 15 left over. Uh, this one, a lot of us did pretty well on this. Uh, two and a half pounds is really five halves, and we divide that by these values, which we then keep change flip. Right, so division by the fraction is going to end up being multiplication of that fraction's reciprocal. So, of course, I'm skipping some steps here. I did not write down all the work because you should come to Math Lab or AO or Extensions if you want to actually go over these problems with me. I just wanted to make sure you guys could see what the right answers were. Uh, this is something I would do if it was a great deal. I would buy a lot of ground turkey and then even freeze it if I need to. Um, so I have six pounds. We're going to divide that up into three eighths of a pound burgers. So six divided by three eighths. Again, we're going to keep change flip. So six over one, because anything can be put over a one divided by three eighths becomes six times eight thirds. So six times eight across the numerator, one times three across the denominator, we get 48 over three, which actually reduces to a perfect 16 burgers that we could make. Uh, 10 cups of trail mix, we divide into two thirds cup servings. Uh, some of us got seven right and eight wrong or vice versa. We got, um, you know, seven wrong and eight right. Like we just, it was kind of interesting to see how some of us uh, tripped up with the thirds here. Uh, but again, this comes out evenly, same process as uh, number seven. Number nine is just checking, do we remember uh, positive and negative multiplication and division rules? So a positive times a negative is negative. A negative times a negative is positive though, because remember the opposite of a negative becomes positive. When we have three negatives, two of them will cancel out. Remember we kind of put that in quotations. Two of them will cancel out to a positive and one of the negatives will leave the problem negative. 
We have one negative here and one negative there. Remember, division works the same as multiplication, same rules. 10 was all about, can we multiply with fractions? So we would need to first turn these into improper fractions. Remember, we've said a lot in class, I have an extreme bias. Um, improper fractions are way easier to work with than mixed numbers. So guys, my bias comes from how do we make things easier, right? Not how do we do things in a difficult manner, how do we simplify them and make them easier? Uh, with squaring values, a little bit of trouble here with the fact that a negative number squared becomes a positive. So remember, a negative times a negative, which is what squaring tells us to do. So a negative times a negative makes a positive. And then three times three, of course, is just nine. I think we all got the nine. Then 36 plus nine equals 45. <clears throat> Applying some of the rules from up here, down here, negative 36 divided by six gives us negative six. 42 divided by negative seven actually gives us the same value of negative six. Uh, if you thought this was division, I think a couple of you did, I went ahead and gave that to you, but negative six plus negative six should be negative 12. Uh, if you divided it, it was one. Uh, the multiplication, I just broke it up into multiplying these and multiplying those. Technically, we would multiply left to right, but also technically, uh, multiplication is commutative. So we know that we can rearrange multiplication in any order that we want. So it doesn't matter if we kind of do them um, in the wrong order, quote unquote, because there's no exact right order, honestly. Is my camera going to come back? Maybe. All right, so then uh, more order of operations down here. The trap door that I kind of set for you guys is recognizing that this is subtraction, right? This is minus six. So if we follow PEMDAS, we need to combine inside the parentheses. So a negative eight and a negative two, right? Or a negative eight minus two, if we want to read it that way, becomes a negative 10. Uh, there's nothing else in parentheses. So now we move on to exponents. There are none. We move on to multiplication. So three times negative 10 will give us negative 30. Excuse me. This is really negative six times three, right? This is a multiplication. So negative six times three is negative 18. We could add an addition symbol here if we want to. So negative 30 plus negative 18 plus a positive 12. Well, I'm going to group my negatives together and say negative 48 plus 12 is negative 36. Uh, and then 13 and 14, these were kind of like bonuses. You know, there aren't really bonus problems at Phoenix, but I just wanted to see how you guys would handle these. So evaluate when we have other values. So like when we need to substitute. So we substitute in 11 for X and four for Y. One thing that caught some of us is we have to add before we divide, even though that's that's not how the order of operations tells us to do it. We want to simplify before we do a division that's that's set up as a fraction. So if we were to write this out horizontally, 11 plus four would actually need to go into parentheses. We know that we need to do it first here because we are able to, and then we are able to divide. Um, but if we wrote this out horizontally, the 11 plus four would need to go in parentheses we could put it in parentheses up here, uh, but it's also kind of just inferred that we simplify before we deal with a fraction. Here we plug in the fractions and we just go straight through the numerators, straight through the denominators. We have two negatives, so we're gonna get a positive. And four over 105 does not reduce. So our answer just stays four over 105. And then you can see the answers to our exemplary problems here. I am not going to go over those. If you got any of those wrong and you want to come talk to me about why you got them wrong or what, like what you messed up, come see me, right? Come to uh, AO or extensions and uh, come chat with me. We will uh, get you all taken care of. And uh, these will, we'll be mastering these by eighth grade, um, all the square applications. But we'll keep working on those as this year goes. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're watching this video, you probably need to go do the progressing to mastery that is in Schoology. Uh, so please go take care of that. It is in the remote round three folder. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, let me know if I can do anything to help.